Hello friends, good afternoon and welcome to EduSat live lectures. Dear friends, today we are going to talk about big data and big data we are going to talk about ERP systems part 2. To discuss this topic we have with us our subject expert Prof. Dr. U.S. Pandey. Dr. Pandey is associate professor in department of computer sciences in school of open learning Delhi University. Without further ado, I would like to welcome sir to our studios and request him to start the lecture. Welcome sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, in the previous lectures, we talked about the enterprises resource planning systems in detail what a system is, what is about the architecture and other things. Let us see some more details about that, how it is different than the traditional IS system. The closed database architecture, you can see here, it is similar in concept to flat file approach data remains the property of the application, fragmentation limits communication, existence of numerous distinct and independent databases, redundancy and anomaly problem. Paper based requires multiple entry of data, status of information unknown at key points. As we have discussed in the previous lecture about that how the ERP is going to coming into the picture, what are the main benefits of the ERP as well as what are the architectures are going to be there of the ERP system. Here it is an important thing to know what is traditionally happening. Traditionally, as you know that major activity is going to be done by the paper based activity. It requires the multiple entity of data as the different information unknown at key points. Usually what happened, if the different kind of sections which are involved in multiple activities and they are not sharing the information in between. So, you can imagine it may create a problem or it may take much more time to resolve the problem or sometimes the same type of job is going to be repeated number of times. Take a very simple example, earlier you know if the office is fully automated, even then maybe account section is functioning independently the HR section is functioning independently, the other departments are functioning independently. In the meantime, if a big person of industry or a person like president or CEO or other personalities would like to have a concise information about each department, they do can have, but each and every information will be come to you separately. Take example that some information is not there with the, which is related to the accounts as well as related to the marketing or related to the sales. So, there is no proper coordination among them even if the process is fully automated. So, in traditional way these kind of activities is still going on in many industries many organization, the benefits of the ERP is going to be entirely different because in the case of ERP all the segments, all the module is going to be put together. So, here in the, in the case of other activities when ERP system is not there, even the, if the automation is there, lot of other problems may exist. As we have just mentioned about this paper based activity, you have to enter the data and you have to not having the proper information known at a key points. Now, here you can see a business enterprise, the products, 
we are talking about the traditional information system with closed data architecture. You can see the we are giving the customer is giving the order of the product. The order entry system is there. The information will go to the manufacturing and distributing system. And it is already linked with your customer sales account records that is customer database. The production scheduling shipping is going to be there, manufacturing database and the procurement system, vendor assets pay inventory, the procurement databases and then you see the purchases and supplier. Here you can see that the material is all ready linked with the supplier as well as this manufacturing and distributed system. Same way the customers are interlinked exactly with those kind of activity. So what is happening in the case of traditional information system which is in the closed database architecture you do have a customer database, you do have a manufacturing database, we do have this procurement databases and all. When the items are being supplied, then all the necessary steps involved are being taken care. But imagine if all this information which you are talking at the only about the order system, manufacturing and distributed system procurement system, this is the one segment of the Sbenter enterprises. The same kind of segment can be interlinked by the other activities also. You can see here the ERP system configuration, the databases and bolt in ones. The database configuration selection of database tables in the thousands, setting the switches in the system. You have to configure the database in a such a way lot of thousands of the informations which are going to be there, database tables are going to be there, numerous database tables and all you need to select. And as we mentioned, setting the switches in this different system, bolt on software, the third party vendors provide a specialized functionality software. And supply chain management that we call SCM links vendors carriers, third party logistic companies and information system providers. As we have just mentioned that when you do have a lot of softwares which is fully automated and others like that. A third party vendors who is specialized in different kind of activities which you are performing will provide you the specialized functionality software. So that anything especially if you required you can calculate in between. Take an example when your all activities are going on you would like to see the behavior of the customers, you want to do some kind of performance analysis, you want to develop some kind of model, you want to do some kind of data mining, utilizing some of the specialized softwares that you can use in the system. Even when you are all the process is going on, in between different kind of modules can be fit in to read the activities of your system, the performance of your system, 
are how you can better help to the customers utilizing those specialized software take example again if you want to measure some kind of qt quantitative technique utilizing those are the techniques of operation research to study your business module to study your business activities when your process is going on the data is going on and all activities are going on so what we can do what we want to say that this kind of module can be fit in into the system and those softwares are specialized softwares so there will be a different kind of segments which can be attached what i mean to say in nutshell that there are different features which can be put there into the system itself which will provide a great help to modify your system to make it more convenient to the people not only customer to the system are the users are the other software are what are the other things need to be changed another thing for example maybe you are doing a very much good activity through your system are you are helping your customers your user in a very much good way but you are taking or your response time is not good or doing your transaction is taking too much time naturally even if you have a full secure system the utilization of time the uses by this kind of users or customer is high then definitely you to use some software which can do a proper study regarding all these things and can suggest to you that what are the measures you have to take to do this kind of this is a one task it could be there are many ways how the things are going to be helpful how the business activities are going to be more more useful not only this even if you are working in a system take a educational system where you are getting a kind of admission or filling a form submitting a fees getting the proper responses each and everything if things are not in a order just to study those kind of thing activities we can use some specialized software and make it more meaningful more useful and if something is required then based on the recommendations of these kind of performance model or these kind of softwares we can do the required changes into the software so these are the things how this kind of softwares can be built in into this what is a data warehouse as you know in this case we are talking about the data warehouse where a large amount of data is being stored a relational or multi dimensional database that may consume hundreds of gigabytes or even terabytes of disk storage the data is normally extracted periodically from operational database or from a public information service you are already aware a lot of informations is going to be put together and have been stored somewhere technically in a nutshell that is known as a data warehouse the data warehouse lot of information would be maybe the operational or other kind of informations have been put together have been stored and then it can be used for other purpose also a database constructed for quick searching retrieval ad hoc queries and ease of use as we have just mentioned a huge data is being collected nowadays 
and naturally all data are not in a operational every moment every time so the maximum data which is again we have just mentioned it may be in the form of gigabytes or in terabytes they are being stored separately so that easily a quick searching can be done if require a proper retrieval is going to be done the ad hoc queries can be used or some other kind of applications if require can be put on to that here an erp system could exist without having a data warehouse the trend however is that organizations that are serious about competitive advantages deploy both the recommended data architecture for an erp implementation include separate operational and data warehouse databases the objective of data warehouse to discuss here is as we have just discussed about the erp system again we'd like to mention that it is not necessary to have a data warehouse with erp but again it is to say that when how the information or the data you are going to store in other word even if you do have an erp system you do may require a data warehouse an erp system is doing all kind of calculation performance based activity performing all the instructions which you are giving handling all the data which you are collecting and performing all other activities are going to be done is still to be in the market to store to utilize the data to be for a better activity in future or even when the process is going on a data warehouse is being required you have to see that which erp system is going to be the more comfortable with which kind of architecture of that your data warehouse in other word it is only just to say that erp system and data warehouse are two independent activities and it's okay also but when you have to run this erp system you need to have a data warehouse only then a huge amount of data which you are just generating through your erp system which you are collecting through your system performing all the database activity there then only you can store all those information in a data warehouse and only then you can do the proper accessibility here you can see the data warehouse process the five essential stages of data warehouse processes are modeling data for data warehouse extracting data for operational databases <coughs> and cleansing extracted data the transforming data into the warehouse model loading the data into the data warehouse database all the different kind of five these activities is being performed into the database where data model is consisting are considering your all data into the warehouse model loading the data into data, uh, data warehouse and all the activities are these five activities which are being 
performed at data warehouse. And if required, this can be done through the your ERP system, which data is being utilized at what time, how it is being useful. Data warehouse process is stage 1. You can see here the modeling data for the data warehouse. Because of the vast size of data warehouse, the data warehouse database consists of general normalized data. Relational theory does not apply to the data warehouse system. Whenever possible, normalized tables pertaining to the selected events may be consolidated into the denormalized table. <coughs> Sorry. What I mean to say here is the, that the modeling of this data for the data warehouse is being done. The data is being collected and it put in a normalized data. The relational theory does not apply to this data warehouse whenever the second thing is going to be there extracting data from the operational databases. The process of collecting data from operational databases flat files, archives and external data sources. Another thing is that the snapshots versus stabilized data. A key feature of data warehouse is that the data contained in it are in a non-volatile state. As we have just mentioned that the op collecting data from operational databases. When the process is going on, your business activities are going on, you are doing the different kind of operational activity. At this stage also extracting data from data operational databases, collecting them and putting into the data warehouse. Especially take a simple example when you are just performing a business activity on an e-commerce site. If you have done the earlier or any kind of previous transaction, your information is already stored somewhere. It will extract the information from your data warehouse and try to collect the what are the previous things which you have done related those activities plus at the moment if when you are performing any activity link both if required take again example it may create an account for you you can access those account easily for making for purchasing for doing different kind of business activities the account will contain your all information which you have done from the beginning if required and at would collect the latest information from your databases, operational databases and all other features what are going to be there it will be stored from there. So in nutshell we would like to say that it will extract the data from the activities which you are performing at the and in other words, that is your operational database and it may update if required in your data warehouse if it is a new data. Otherwise, it will do the other needful thing. It will store the data and do the needful. Here in the stage 3, the cleaning, the extracted data. It involves 
filtering out or repairing invalid data prior to being stored in the warehouse. It is a very important feature of the data warehouse process stage 3 that the operational data are dirty for many reasons. Some clerical mistake may be there, data entry is not in a proper way, computer program error could be there, misspelled names are going to be there, blank fields could be there. So, uh, at this stage all these things is being taken care. If due to some reason or due to any reason you are not able to get the correct data, correct data here means is authenticated as well as not containing the different garbage the reasons we specified, it could be at the time of handling, it could be at the time of data entry, it could be the some kind of calculation errors and as we have mentioned, it could be some misspelled names or some of the field which is blank. It also involves transferring data into standard business terms with the standard data values. As we have just mentioned, this is a very important case where this cleansing extracted data is being performed. At this data warehouse stage 3, all these things being taken care and ensure that the proper data in a proper order is being stored in a data warehouse. Here you can see stage 4, the transforming data into the warehouse model to improve efficiency data is transformed into summary views before they are loaded. Unlike operational views which are virtual in nature with underlying base tables, data warehouse views are physical tables. OLAP, however, permits the user to construct virtual views from detailed data when one does not already exist. Here, as again we have discussed, by after stage 1, 2, 3 and 4, at the fourth stage of the data warehouse process, it is transforming the data into warehouse model and then all the required things is being done at this stage. Now, another the last stage that is the fifth stage where the loading the data into data warehouse database. The data warehouse must be created and maintained separately from the operational databases. Why? internal efficiency to maintain, 
integration of legacy system and consolidation of global data. As we have just mentioned that there are all the first, second, third, fourth and fifth stages. The data which is being loaded into the data warehouse, it is suggested that you have to maintain different databases, especially to maintain the operational database. Again, by example, you can see when a lot of activities are going on. In other words, when process is going on, you have entered the data and still it need to be processed and all activities are taking place. At that stage, these data need to be stored in operational databases. If required, if we want to store for other activities, if those data can be stored into a data warehouse after doing after seeing the lot of activities if required. So, when the data which is in a operational stage have been collected and then done the meaningful activities and if required then data is required to be stored in data, data warehouse. Again we are putting an emphasis on that that when you are doing the operational activity a separate operational database must be used. So, that if some kind of problems are persisting related to the operational databases, this may not occur at the data warehouse. And again as we have just mentioned that the internal efficiency, the integration of the legacy system, the consolidation of this global data, all these things are being required. So, here you can see the data warehouse system, the legacy system, order entry system, purchase systems are going to be there, which is linked here with the network DB, ERP system you can see here with the operational databases. Then after doing this data cleansing process, it will go to the data warehouse where you can see here the sales data summarized annually. The structure could be like that sales data summarize quarterly. Current this week detailed sales data is there. The previous year information, the previous quarter information, the previous week information achieved over time. You can see here how all these things after calculating doing these activities are going to be used in a data warehouse. So, you see from the legacy system, ERP system, operational database, data cleansing process, how the data warehouse is being created and how these informations are being stored in this case for old data that is in the previous years, the previous quarters, the previous weeks or if it is the latest thing like that day to day activity all these things are going to be there. So, this data if required it can be used again reused or you want to retrieve due to some reason easily you can get all those things. Now, risk associated with the ERP implementation. We do have talked lot about the ERP system, 
data warehouse, how these things are interlinked about the architecture. Now, the risk associated with the ERP implementation. Now, the very important thing is pace of implementation, bing bang switch operations from legacy system to ERP in a single event, phased in independent ERP units installed over time, assimilated and integrated. The opposition to change to the business culture, user reluctance and inertia, need of upper management support. As we just say that there are different kind of risk which are associated with the ERP systems are Usually, when a new change is coming into the industry, a lot of opposition is taking place. It is not because the entire culture of the working is going to be changed into the system. What kind of provisions you are giving to the employees? What kind of training you are giving to these employees? how much information they can get just get extracted from there, how they can collect it from there, these things are also very important. Now, choosing the wrong ERP, goodness of fit. Now, there is no one ERP system is best for all industries. Scalability, systems ability to grow, how much changes can be incorporated in those ERP system if things are not in a proper order or how much this system is providing you the facility. As we say, sometimes there are many ERP system, maybe it is not best suitable to your activities, best suitable to your industry's requirement or it is not suitable in form of usability or friendly use which is going to be done by the employees or the accessible persons. It have been seen that although it is performing a much more in a good way, many technicalities are there or in other words, some kind of problems are persisting, then still you need a lot of technical help. That is why it is a very important thing that you have to choose a proper ERP system which satisfying your job. You can understand with a very small example, everyone is aware that even these packages which are coming very user friendly to you, thousands of system packages are there someone is good for one person, someone is good for another and even they are containing all important feature, still people say they are not taking as in a good way. So, the very important thing, there are a lot of ERP systems are there, it is very important to choose the correct one. And as we have just mentioned that no ERP system is sufficient. Just by take an example I have given, take a very small example, you know about the accounting system. People use a very small software tally, usually which is containing a lot of features, 
but does not mean that satisfied everybody's requirement. Everybody means here every organizational requirement, every office requirement. So, what is happening is they need some kind of changes. Even after that, they are not being satisfied the activities. So, same thing could maybe happen with the ERP system that the ERP system is not able to satisfy your job, not only by the activities, because the system is being used by the employees of the organization and usually if they are not able to use in a proper manner, there is no use. Or in other way, the choosing the wrong consultants are. common to use third party, the big five, B throw in interviewing potential consultants, established explicit expectation. It is again very important because a huge amount is going to be spent on that ERP system, you must use a proper consultant here instead of using a wrong consultant, we will put the consultant which is having a good experience for implementation of this ERP system based on the feasibility study or the other kind of system study which have been done in your organization, these risks are being associated. High cost and cost overruns. As we have just mentioned, the major risk because it implements a high cost and the maintenance cost is also going to be very high the training, testing and integration, the conversion of database, this is also an important faction. So, there are a lot of risk which are associated with the ERP system. We had talked about this today, how the different data warehouse phases are being done stage 1 to stage 5, what are the different risks are associated with your ERP implementation system, what are other traditional business activity, the traditional databases, how it is going to be different. So, this is how to the about your ERP system. Thank you. Uh, I would uh, hope that the, all the students who are watching this show found, find this, uh, this discussion very informative and, and very knowledgeable. And on that note, I would like to thank sir for this lecture and uh, I would like to thank you dear friends for watching. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you.